you know what? I'll just say this. Is the grocery store gonna get mad at me if I complain about the carts not being returned? Wait, what? <laughs> like, if I come on the podcast and complain about something or talk about something, yeah. am I supposed to talk about no people, places, or things while I'm here? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Hello, Star. Hello, everyone. How are you today? I hope that you're having a really good day so far. If you are new here, my name is Taylor. This is Star Baby Moon Child, and we come to you from Baltimore City, Maryland. And here on my YouTube channel, I feature content that is generally focused on knitting and spinning. In this episode of what I call the Thread to Men podcast, where I sit down and share with you the things that I am working on in real time, I have a lot to talk about. And the very first is something I'm excited to share. Happy and Polly reached out to me and let me choose something from their website to share with you and talk about. And I'm really excited to share this super amazing present to to my to my not to myself but to the world the world needed this happy and polly reached out to me for the second time to sponsor this week's episode of the thread to men podcast and they asked for me to pick out anything i wanted from their website and i scrolled through pages and pages of the coolest cat trees cat scratchers cat beds cat toys cat accessories they have things for small dogs and animals as well but I looked at everything and I couldn't really choose. It was difficult. There's so many cool things on their website to choose from. I love that they have ergonomic food bowls and pet water fountains, which I feel like any cat would love. But when I saw this gift, I knew it was exactly what I needed. I opened this box just the other day and inside was my personalized cat portrait stamp. Now this is the full image that I sent over to them, but they did send me the most perfect portrait of Star Baby Moonchild, who is not here with us right now. She might make an appearance soon, but the minute I opened this gift, I started stamping anything I could. And this is the result of Star Baby's personal portrait stamp. Um, it took some tries. I was obviously quite aggressive with the very first stamp of this uh, here, but by the third or fourth try, I really got it down. I think the top and bottom corners are the best examples of how good this stamp turned out. It's everything that I thought it might be and more. It's They nailed it. They really did such a great job making this personalized pet portrait stamp for me. Um, and this was only a $16 gift. I'm so happy to have received this gift from happyandpolly.com. And I'm gonna leave a link below to their website for you to check them out. If you are so inclined, you can save 10% off your order with happyandpolly.com by using the code TaylorOwen10 to get 10% off your total order. I wanna thank Happy and Polly so much again for sponsoring this week's video, and I hope that you might check them out. I am currently wearing the Yell Cardigan by Marie Wallen. This is a adventurous knit. It took quite a while, a few years ago, to accomplish this project, but I did so with a total hodgepodge of two ply fingering weight yarns that I had stashed away. I used mostly Jameson and Smith. There's an Elemental Effects Shetland yarn thrown in here and I combined Biche and Bouche Le Petit Lamb's Wool with uh, the Rauma Phenol Garn in this kind of sandy beige color. And I really love this garment. I don't think I wear it quite enough. It's super comfortable. It's very warm. I almost started to sweat when I sat down to record today, but I knew I hadn't worn this one in a while, so I thought I would throw it on and tell you a little bit about it again. One modification I have been planning to do for years is to pick the button band back up, knit it twice as long, and then tack it down at the inside to fold it over and make it a little bit more resilient because it does constantly roll and that rolling you can see the inside of the button band and it just doesn't look quite as crisp and clean as the front side 
if you were able to see it. So that's one thing I would do differently if I were to make it again. I did modify this pattern slightly while in the process of making it. I decided to break my yarn at the short row shaping for each round so that I could just continually work the front side facing each row. Um, I don't enjoy knitting color work on the wrong side. I don't know anyone who does. I've never actually done it, I don't think, so I just did that. And then while I was working the short rows with the front side facing, I pretty much just kind of threw the instructions away at that point and only picked up to work the areas between motifs so that as I was including extra stitches within a motif, let's see, this is the actual seam here if you can't tell, um, I only knit the motif to be symmetrical. So rather than picking up mid motif to continue the short row shaping, I did so at either the start or the end of a motif so that it would be completely symmetrical and just kind of fade into the overall pattern of the garment a little bit more seamlessly. So that was one thing I did different than the written pattern. And then um, I did not do any decreases of the forearm. I just completely omitted those instructions as well. Once I cast on the stitches I needed for the armhole, I just knit straight and kept it really simple. It did give a bit of a kind of bell sleeve effect, which I really like. And also if I were to knit it again from the start, I would make this upper armhole a tad bit wider. Um, it might have been my gauge that threw it off, but I do feel that that hole was a little bit narrower than ultimately I would have ever wanted. But it did give me a reasonable width sleeve without having to decrease at all. So those are my overall notes of the Yell cardigan. I think I have a full dedicated video to this garment if you're interested in knowing more information than that. That's what I'm wearing today. And I have a lot to talk about. You may already know that I intended to cast on for Andrea Mowry's Bear Paw Knit Along Challenge. Each year for the last several years, Andrea has hosted a Knit Along Challenge over the Thanksgiving long weekend holiday. And on Wednesday night, I cast on for this project. I'm really glad I got that early start to this because I have not been knitting socks in recent years. I am not at all practiced and I don't often um, cast on socks. So I really didn't know exactly what I was doing without instructions. The first time I cast on this project Wednesday night, I think I cast on double the sizes that I needed using the recommended size needle. I had worked just enough to know the fabric didn't feel quite as tight as I had wanted it to for a sock. So I did go down a needle size. I cast on the correct number of stitches this time. And then I realized that by going down a needle size, these socks were going to be way too small. Like they were definitely going to fit a child and a child only. So by the time I got to the point where I was about to then knit the contrast color, I decided I was going to add enough increases once more to go up a size in the pattern. So I did knit the, I have been knitting these socks according to the women's medium stitch count. And the toe is a little bit wonky because I did knit those four rounds even before increasing additional stitches to make the sock actually fit. Um, once it's blocked, you won't really tell the difference. These sock blockers are a little smaller than my actual foot. So for the heel to match up, they kind of stick out a little bit. But you know, they will fit just the same. They just don't look quite as polished as I think the actual written pattern would. Um, but I otherwise followed the instructions the same. And I've been working this project two at a time. So each time I complete one step of the process with one sock, I switch and I do the same thing for the second sock. And I know that I'm gonna get them both done because by the time I have finished 
90% of this sock, I will then switch and complete 90% of the second sock. And then it's just 10% to go on both. And I know that I'm going to have two socks in the end. I'm currently feeling a bit of a love hate relationship with this color combination, mostly because when I knit the main color by itself, I loved that so much. I kind of regretted adding that bright pop of yellow. And then once I marled them together, I didn't hate it quite as much as I had just those two separate. I think that they did marry each other well, holding them together. But the color combination in general is giving me real tree Bass Pro Shop vibes. Like I need to be wearing a camo something with these socks. I'm embracing it fully. I don't have any regrets because I'm going to be happy ultimately that I've used both skeins of yarn in my stash. I don't think that I had any other super wash fingering weight skeins of yarn left. I had given most of them away just because I never used them and I felt like they were languishing in my stash with no ultimate project ahead of them and I just felt like they deserved a better home than I was able to provide. But I did hold on to these two because they were both 80-10-10 Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon blends which are so soft, so slinky, and I'm really happy that I kept them. I'm happy that I combined them in this project together. I, I love a real tree moment. I, I, I don't know. I don't know about this. They do match the pair of laces I currently have in my roller skates. So I think that they're gonna be really fun to skate in. Really enjoying the process so far. I never thought that a heel could be so painless. Every time I've knit a heel in the past, unless it was an afterthought heel, which I find very straightforward, very simple to execute, I've always been intimidated by the whole heel flap and gusset thing. Um, which this is not a heel flap and gusset pattern. I, I don't really know all of the sock knitting terminology uh, when it comes to different forms of heels. I couldn't tell you what type of heel this is, but um, it's as simple as increasing on both sides till you have more stitches. And then you're doing a lot of short rows to um, with decreases to Bring yourself back to the original stitch count. I really like this actual heel design because you can try on the sock as you go and if you've knit the foot of your sock way too long you could simply rip back not all that much knitting and start over. Um, I might have knit these socks a little bit big for me. I know that they're too small for Brian to wear because I did have him try them on but I think that they will fit well enough that for my first try and knitting socks again in a very long time. I'm quite pleased with the results so far. I have tonight and tomorrow to wrap this project up and submit my photo. I'm excited to have knit a pair of socks and to have these to skate in all winter. I think that will be really fun. And I need another pair of hand knit socks. Can't wait till these are finished. I've been knitting Andrea Mowry's throw over. I'm a girl that loves color work. And I decided to knit a mini version for my small dog, Starship Enterprise, which I'm gonna have her model for you now. Here she is. She's a little camera shy, but Starship is loving her new sweater. Um, I hope you can see it. She's wearing a, a little harness that does obscure it, but I think you can get a good look from the side here. It does fit quite well. I really love the way that the um, arms meet her body. I think that it's the right proportions and shape. Um, her previous sweater, she always would try to get an arm out of it. I think it wasn't the most comfortable, but it worked. So um, this one is a sweater that I think she is a lot more comfortable in and a pattern that I think that I will repeat for future dog sweaters. Um, in my previous podcast video, I went into detail on how I cast off stitches for the armholes. I did complete the short row shaping at the bottom of the sweater to make the back of it much longer than the belly. And other than that, I don't know what else to say. So one day soon, her and I are gonna be matchy matchy, which is gonna be so stinking cute. And I have quite a bit of 
leftover yarn from previous projects, I think that I might knit more matching sweaters for us. Anytime I give Starship a bath, I wash her harness in the sink and it is full of dirt and it will smell so bad and come out quite clean in the end. Um, but I do find that synthetic fibers really get stinky fast and the wool fiber really doesn't stink at all. If anything, it smells its worst when it's washed and it's clean, but wet and drying. Um, so I will forever knit wool sweaters for my tiny dog and they're a lot simpler than I built them up to be in my mind. I wasn't sure how I was going to execute the armholes for this, but I figured out an approach that I think worked for me and I want to knit more. There's still so much that I wish to accomplish this weekend. I have a new shrub I need to plant in my front yard garden and I need to start washing the fleece I brought home from the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival. If you don't recall, I brought home a merino and fin cross fleece. I split that fleece so I only brought half of it home. In fact, I think I might take you downstairs with me as I start to prep this fleece for washing and storage.
If you made it this far into this week's episode of the Bread to Men podcast, let me know in a comment below with the cat portrait emoji of your choice in honor of the amazing pet portrait stamp I received from happyandpolly.com. Again, I will link to their website below for you to check out if you're interested. And again, you can save 10% off your order with the code TaylorOwen10. And if you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry and Instagram. You can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. I want to thank you so much for being here. It means so much to me that you take the time to watch these videos and enjoy this content along with me here on YouTube. And I hope that you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and that you take care.